The Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning is a 2006 horror film that acts as a prequel to the 2003 remake. Texas Chainsaw The Beginning was filmed by a different director, Jonathan Lee Bessman, who is also known for Rings and Wrath of the Titans. Tobe Hooper and Kim Hankel return as co-producers so maybe with their influence the film will be just as great as the remake. The film opens up at a slaughterhouse where we see a woman plead to be able to use the restroom only to break her water and leak blood right on the floor near the meat, talk about unsanitary. She then proceeds to give birth prematurely to some pumpkin head looking motherfucker who is then thrown in a dumpster. I know people say babies are cute and that some people have a face only a mother could love but this is really pushing the limits. After that the film has a mild recreation of the original intro, with no real narration, just showing landscapes, some corpses, and young Leatherface. We soon learn that the place is eventually shut down due to violating health code sometime around the Vietnam War, and that Leatherface was employed at this place. When he's asked to leave, we get a nice fake out where we think someone is going to die, but Leatherface just stands there, menacingly. We then get introduced to the characters, Chrissy, Dean, Bailey, and Eric. And how are we introduced to them? By bandage and talks of marriage and being drafted into Vietnam. After this interesting to say the least moment, we cut back to the factory where we see the boss packing up but not before. Insulting Leatherface's family and the dying town once more, and let's just say Leatherface doesn't take kindly to such Yankee talk. After punishing his former boss and searching through the office a bit, he finds his iconic chainsaw and decides to call it a day, and in a day's work really. We then see our protagonists going on a road trip, listening to a song that released in 1970 even though the film is set in 1969. After this driving scene an officer arrives at the Hewitt residence, and informs them that their nephew made an oopsy by killing his boss, so he gets one of the family, who is played by R. Lee Erme by the way, to help apprehend O.L. Head Cheese. After driving for a bit and arguing about if he's mentally challenged or not they find the bastard. Just as the sheriff is about to try and shoot Leatherface, the family member takes his shotgun and blows his head clean off because he ain't no snitch. He then takes some of the sheriff's stuff and proceeds to wear two hats like a fucking asshole, the nerve of some people. Driving back home, he decides to cosplay as the sheriff, and we see that he's the same one from the remake, what a small world we live in. Seeing this, the mom throws some shade his way and hands him his pants then walks out. At the dinner table, the newly quote-unquote appointed sheriff discusses how the town is dying, the factory meant a lot to the town and how they'll protect the town from those goddamned bikers and hippies. He then ends his Oscar-worthy speech by noting their actions will speak louder than their words. It is then revealed that for some reason they decide to turn to cannibalism, but the mom is only upset that he didn't say grace. Charlie, say grace. And, being real for a second, I honestly thought the mom was supposed to be the wife at first. Well, I suppose it is Texas and Texas is close to Alabama. We then see the new sheriff start his first day of work and the group heading to a gas station, wonder how important the station will be in this movie. After some Vietnam drama, we get a biker jump scare, nothing is scarier than a group of bearded men, after this they're on their merry way, and when Dean tries to burn his draft order right in the car with his unknowing brother like a dumbass, the truth finally comes out. They then argue but it looks like they have bigger trouble a biker who's trying to play GTA in real life. Before Eric can shoot the attacker, they crash into and kill a poor innocent cow, if any more cows die I don't know if I'll be able to take it. The sheriff then comes to the rescue and executes the would-be Bonnie seconds after she says I'm glad you're here officer. After forcing them to get out of the car, the sheriff sees the draft card partly burned and forces Dean to put the dead biker in his car. After driving off, Chrissy, who was thrown out of the car during the wreck, finally crawls out of grass, safe from any Pokemon. 
Searching through the wreckage, Chrissy hides after spotting a Tatruck driver who appears to be the perverted cripple from the remake. After the wrecked is towed off, the sheriff interrogates the remaining group while taking them to his place. When they arrive at his place, the group gets a brief encounter with Leatherface, and they're unnerved to say the least. After this, they're hung up by the arms in the garage, as if they were fresh meat in storage. After giving the filthy livestock a half-assed bath, what a gentleman, the hung-up group see. The tow truck driver, who plainly refuses to help as he doesn't get involved in the sheriff's affairs. The sheriff comes back to the shed and almost kills Eric with sarin wrap via suffocation, but Dean steps in by revealing the truth. While Dean is lying face down on the ground, the sheriff hints at why he eats people, that he was a prisoner of war in the Korean War. Dean is offered a chance at freedom if he can do 10 push UPS, sounds simple right? Well even though he did complete the challenge, the asshole passes out making it all mood. Chrissy meanwhile had been running off for help and finally finds a biker, who only helps her because they had killed his friend. While the mother is having a tea party, Eric finally escapes his bondage and breaks into the house, after rescuing his friend he traps the morbidly obese friend of the mother in between the door and the table to delay Sheriff Hoy temporarily. After making an admirable attempt to escape, Bailey is assaulted by Leatherface who uses a hook to pull her out of the moving truck. Eric attempts to distract the sheriff while Dean escapes, but Dean, being the family disappointment, gets trapped in a bear trap that for some reason was just lying around. Following a brief exchange, Leatherface takes Eric down to his dungeon where he shows him the defining line between pain and pleasure, a demon to some and an angel to others. Leatherface starts by cutting off his shirt and feeling his face, wait a second am I watching a Texas Chainsaw movie or am I watching fucking Jason goes to hell? Meanwhile, Chrissy sneaks into the house and is almost caught. Repeatedly and the biker she was with shows us how the amputee dude in the first movie lost his legs, by being shot, kind of making a mountain out of a mole hole aren't we? Anywho the biker drags the sheriff upstairs and the sheriff calls for Leatherface, which gives Chrissy an opportunity to meet up with Eric. While this is going on, Leatherface catches up with the biker and kills him after the sheriff manipulates him by telling him he was one of the people who used to bully him in school. Chrissy tries to rescue Eric but is helpless as Eric killed by a chainsaw and his face effortlessly skinned. And can I just say that Leatherface has never been more terrifying, at least to look at, than in this movie. Now Leatherface is upstairs and he and Hoyt cut off the soon-to-be amputee's legs. Mind you this is over a gunshot wound that wouldn't even call for amputation. This, of course, horrifies that mom and Monty the amputee. Chrissy tries to rescue Bailey but is caught within seconds. During a tense dinner scene, we see Bailey has lost several of her teeth and Chrissy call the Hewitt's degenerates and cousin fuckers. Bailey is then killed by Leatherface by having her throat slit. With the biggest scissors I've ever seen, after being asked by Mama to set her free. As Leatherface tries to take her to the basement. She stabs him in the back and jumps out a window, thus adding property damage to her list that also includes assault, defamation, and breaking and entering. Leatherface gives chase to her through the fields and we see that Dean is surprisingly still alive and gets some payback on the sheriff instead of running away. Not the smartest choice but it's understandable, regardless, Dean smacking Hoyt's face against the porch shows us how he lost his two front teeth. Chrissy makes her way into the factory where Leatherface worked and we see that it's been completely untouched and the body is still there, not even beginning to decompose. Afterwards, Leatherface gives chase in the factory and we see Chrissy hiding in a tub of blood that likely is rotting and full of maggots and mosquitoes, mmm delicious. Dean admirably joins in the fight and distracts Head Cheese just as he's about to kill Chrissy but sadly dies himself. Chrissy gets away in a car and just as we think she's gonna be the final girl, Leatherface reveals himself in the car and kills her. Crashing the vehicle into a police officer and a dude being given a ticket, instantly killing them both and giving us a fucking Wilhelm scream of all things. After this, 
Leatherface gets out of the car and we get an ending monologue detailing that from 1969 to 1973 the Hewitt family killed 33 people in Texas, and with that we get a gorgeous shot of him walking down the highway alone, chainsaw in hand. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning is not a movie that uses the vegan message like the original, however it does utilize the idea of working people being put out of work and being forced I guess into cannibalism. It also delves into the Vietnam War and draft dodging which is neat and thankfully the movie isn't heavy-handed about this. In terms of how it would compare to the remake in terms of gore and a focus on trauma from the Hewitts. The beginning is definitely more twisted and violent despite not leaning into the PTSD side of things. Every scene involving violence upon characters is very graphic and drawn out, and dare I say, torturous. In fact, while the film doesn't necessarily have a big kill count, it's so tense that a chainsaw is needed to cut through the tension. Honestly the chainsaw kills are almost uncomfortable at times to watch, not quite Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and or 2 levels but still. Cinematically, the film is similar to the remake in spite of having a new cinematographer, except thankfully it doesn't have that god-awful Skyrim filter. The acting in this film is great and it's appropriately paced, perhaps better even than the remake. Overall, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning is a great movie that's just as good as the remake, even if it wasn't necessarily a necessary movie, and with that I'd give it an 8 out of 10. And that'll be the video, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed it please be sure to follow me on social media.